The mothers of the children prosecutors say were killed by Janine Jones have formed an unbreakable bond. What they have lived through, the death of a baby, and then learning that child could have been murdered. All common experiences that none of them wanted, but ones that have left them clinging to each other for support. It has been their collective goal to see Jones spend the rest of her life in prison. It is that bond and that goal that were the subject of so many stories by San Antonio Express News Courthouse reporter Elizabeth Zavala. It was, it was probably one of the most amazing things that I've seen. Many times they would um, sit in, in the benches in the court with their arms locked, or if someone would start crying, they would put an arm around someone, but they immediately to me appeared to be a united front. Petty had a lot of guilt regarding the San Antonio babies, as she called them. She had a lot of guilt because she said Bear County didn't do right by the moms. Petty, in a sense, became like the guide for these women. These women gravitated to her like, like, their, her like their heroine, really, their hero, because of everything that she had gone through. This wasn't book club. This wasn't girls night out. This wasn't let's go to happy hour. This was a bond that was created by the tragic loss of their babies with the common denominator being Janine Jones. Two of the mothers died before Jones was sentenced to life in prison. We talked to the daughter of one of those women. Her mother, Juanita Villarreal, passed away in December. Melissa Luna was in court the day that Jones pleaded guilty in this most recent case. There for not only her mother, but the older brother she never knew. She passed on December 11th, the morning of December 11th. She was pronounced at uh, 5.30 a.m. Melissa Luna never expected to say goodbye to her mother the way that she did. At 64 years old, Juanita Villarreal had a sudden onset of pneumonia. Her body shut down and she died in hospice care just days later. And I held her hand the whole night and um, she, um, I'm sorry. I, I, I just couldn't, I had to hold her hand. You know, I was trying, I had to let her know. That was my way of being able to let her go to say, hey, you're not alone. Luna had been by her mother's side long before she took her last breath. She was her mother's companion in court, helping Villarreal, who spoke mostly Spanish, understand each legal step in the case against her son's accused killer, Janine Jones. This one just, it hurts to see this one. Villarreal's son, Paul, died September 24th, 1981. He was four months old. A baby in a casket for anybody, you know, whatever the cause was, it's, hard, you know, and to know that he was murdered. Paul was born with a deformed skull and had been in the hospital following surgery to correct it. Luna says her mother was told the procedure was a success. She was told to go home the day that he died. She was told, hey, you know, um, everything's okay. He's going to be taken care of, you know, and he'll, he's going to go home. He'll be fine. But hours later, they call her and they're like, hey, you need to come to the hospital. Your son's dead. Luna says her mother never got clear answers after Paul's death or even a chance to talk to a doctor. She was told her son had a heart problem. Decades later, prosecutors would allege Janine Jones injected baby Paul with a powerful drug that killed him. A mother knows, a mother knows. So she just, she knew. She knew that my brother didn't just die. She knew that something had happened to him. Growing up, Luna says her mother didn't talk much about losing Paul, but it's been a heartache that her family has always known. It's been hard not knowing what could have been, you know, I mean, especially being that he was an older brother. I, I don't know what our relationship would have been like. It, it hurts. It really hurts. As she got older, she didn't really smile as much in her pictures, so. I love this picture of her. We first talked to Luna in December, weeks before Jones was supposed to go to trial. She planned to be in court, sitting alongside the loved ones of Jones' other alleged victims. I mean, all of, all of us, all of our biggest goals is to have her take her last breath in prison. As we know now, when that day in court came, there would be no trial. 
Jones took a plea deal and was sentenced to life in prison in return. We talked to Luna again that day. She came out of the courtroom smiling. I can walk out with a smile on my face because even though my brother is in a box, she's going to spend the rest of her life in a box too. So I, I can smile today knowing that. And so a life sentence in prison becomes the likely conclusion to what has been a heart-wrenching, unexplainable part of San Antonio and Hill Country history. We thank you for joining us for this special edition of KSAT News at 9, and special thanks to all who shared their stories. Thank you.